this experiment using melody string we will be discussing three objectives the first aim of the experiment would be to find out the frequency of tuning fork the second one would be to determine a unknown mass the third is to determine the relative density of a solid and then the relative density of a given liquid now coming to the circuit this is the electrically vibrated tuning fork this is connected to a series simple circuit a power supply a dc power supply a key the tuning fork system and a rheostat to adjust the current in the circuit if you want you can also introduce an ammeter here just to confirm the minimum flow of current required for vibrating this tuning fork so this is just a simple series circuit so it is immaterial whether you place your key here a rheostat here or whichever alternate method you would like to it should be in series that is all and when you are connecting an ammeter see to it that positive of the battery supply is connected to the positive of the ammeter if at all you are connecting an ammeter now throughout the experiment you will be proceeding with two modes of vibration one is a transverse mode of vibration and the other is longitudinal mode of vibration why you call this the transverse mode let us see here the tuning fork will be vibrating in this direction and the energy flow will be in this direction or the vibrations will be moving in this direction so you call this as transverse mode because the tuning fork is vibrating in a perpendicular direction with respect to the energy flow while in a longitudinal mode the circuit is the same for the tuning fork the only difference is you will arrange the tuning fork in such a way that it vibrates in this manner and the wave is also moving in this manner in a string okay so this is a electrically vi vibrated tuning fork and a string is connected to it the vibrations will be carried over to the string and at the end of the string you are hanging a mass m this mass m will see to it that the string is held straight so that the vibrations can have a definite pattern one thing to be understood is when the string vibrates this is the length of the string and when it vibrates always notes will be formed at this point as well as this point the two ends notes will happen and in between there will be notes and anti notes for the vibration this will be true in the case of transverse as well as longitudinal vibration so the aim of our experiment is to find out what is this loop length loop length means length of one loop that is from one node to the another node while taking measurement it is always advisable to leave the first no first loop because it will help you to reduce the error measure the length of definite number of loops and divide it by the number of loops so that we can get the loop length that is the length of one loop so this will be the aim of our experiment or practical side of our experiment so first we will hang a definite mass here when we speak of the mass that is hanged here let me take an example if i am putting 2 grams 2 grams here and hanging it in a scale pan so let 
the mass of my scale pan be 0.5 gram. The net mass that is effectively hanging here is 2.5 gram. Then I may increase the weight that is added here to 3 gram when I do the repetition of the experiment. So the total weight here would be 3 gram plus 0.5 that is the mass or weight of the scale pan. So altogether the weight would be 3.5 gram during repetition. This may again be increased to 4.5 and so on. So once again coming to the procedure. What we will be doing is make a series circuit with the tuning fork. So that the tuning fork will vibrate. Make the arrangement in a transverse mode. Keep the string straight. And apply a mass here. The net mass would be the known weight that you add in the scale pan plus the weight of the scale pan. That will be the total mass that which, can, which we can take as capital M. Measure the loop length. If I'm measuring the length for three loop, then take the measurement and divide it by three so that I can get the length of one loop. That is what is required. Okay. After that, repeat the experiment for longitudinal mode. Here, also find out the length of one loop. Now, coming to the theory part. According to theory of vibration of strings, fundamental frequency of vibration of a string of length L and mass per unit length small m Subjected to a tension T is given by frequency N is equal to 1 by 2L root of T by M. Here, L stands for the length of one loop. T stands for tension. If capital M is the mass that we hang at the end of the string, then M into G will give you the tension T. Then small m which is the mass per unit length. We will take the weight of 10 meter of string. So weight of 10 meter of string. This you can find out using a common balance. Exactly using a common balance. So weight of 10 meter by 10 meter will give you mass per unit length or mass per meter. So this would be the procedure. Take 10 meter of the wire and weigh it in a common balance. Then divide it by 10 meter so that you will get weight of 1 meter. Linear density is mass per unit length. So you can find out what is small m. The linear density for the final equation for transverse mode of vibration n is equal to root of g by 4m small m into m by l square and when it is longitudinal mode of vibration the equation would be frequency of the tuning fork is equal to root of g by small m into capital m by l square So this is a basic circuit of Meldy string apparatus. It consists of a DC power supply, the electrically vibrated tuning fork, the string, the Meldy string attached to this tuning fork, the rheostat, the ammeter and the key. So this is the series circuit. As I have mentioned in the theory, it doesn't matter if the position of these components are interchanged because it is just a series circuit. All you have to take care is if you are introducing an ammeter, then the positive of the ammeter should be connected to positive of the power supply. You may note that in the circuit which we discussed, ammeter was absent. It is not, in fact, essential. I have introduced it just to ensure that or just to observe the current flowing in the circuit. You can do the experiment 
even without this ammeter. Power from this DC power supply will excite this tuning fork and the string attached to this tuning fork will vibrate. In the transverse mode, the vibration of the tuning fork will be in this manner while the wave will be traveling or the energy will be traveling in this direction. So, they are mutually perpendicular and hence you call this as transverse mode. Now let us observe the string. This is a long string that is attached to the vibrating tuning fork. And at the end there is a wheel and the thread is suspended at the end with a scale pan and standard weights introduced into the scale pan. So it is this total weight that is the weight from the standard weight box as well as the weight of the scale pan that is the total weight that is suspended at the end of the string and it, give a, it provides the tension for the string. It is this tension T that we have mentioned as mass into gravity mg. We will switch on the power supply. Introduce the key, close the key, close the circuit. Now you can see the ammeter is reading zero. Now I will give a contact over here. At that moment, current will flow and ammeter will show a reading. Now the circuit is closed. When it is contact with the tuning fork, you can see that current flows through the circuit and now the ammeter will read. The reading of the ammeter can be something around 0.5, in between 0.5 and 1 ampere, as far as this tuning fork is concerned. So depending upon the requirement of power of the tuning fork, you will have to adjust the current. Now, I'll try to vibrate it. Maybe you can see the spark. The vibration is clear. The tuning fork is made to vibrate and the string attached to this tuning fork is giving you transverse mode of vibration. Hope it is clear. The string is vibrating. I'll stop the vibration so that you can identify it. Now the vibration is stopped. Now again I'll vibrate it to see the difference. I'll vibrate it. Just a minute. Yeah, now the vibrations have come. Hope you can see. Can you make out the node? It is the node over here. It is the anti-node over here. And it is again the node over here. So this is one loop. From here till here is one loop. From here till here is the second loop. This is the node. This is the anti-node. Anti-node you can have a top view so that it will be clear. This is the anti-node. This is the node. So what I will do is keep this indicator marker at the node point. You can leave the first no first loop if you want for accuracy sake. So first knot and counting one, two, three, four, five, six. Whatever is convenient is okay. So I have kept the second indicator after six loops. Using a scale, I will measure the distance, exactly the length of six loops. So from the length of definite number of loops, you can find out what is the length of a single loop. That is a parameter that you require for your calculation. So this is the transverse mode of vibration of the melody string and you have found out the length of one loop under this mode. Now this is the second mode of vibration of melody string apparatus. This is a longitudinal mode. Here the tuning fork is kept in this manner so that the prongs of the tuning fork vibrate in this direction. And it is same as the direction of transmission of the wave through the string. So this is called longitudinal mode of vibration. Now I will close the key 
and try to vibrate the string. You can fix the vibration with this knob if you want. And you can see the beautiful vibrations that are developed here. Hope you can see. This is the anti node. This is the node. This is the next anti node. This is the next node. And so on. You can just have a look. Now, what you can do is keep your indicators at the nodes. So, first indicator, I have left out the loops at the two ends of the wire because it may give you some error. So, I'm trying to keep this three loops you can see. I have kept the indicator at one node. First loop, second loop, third loop and the node over here. I have kept the indicators and measure the length of three loops. So once the length of three loops or you can take whichever is convenient for you, four loops or even two loops is fine according to your convenience. Anyway, what we want is length of one loop. So once this measurement is made, you have finished the transverse mode of vibration as well as the longitudinal mode of vibration. So from these parameters, you can calculate what is the frequency of the tuning fork. That is the first aim of the melody string apparatus as we have discussed in the theory. Now before calculating the frequency of the tuning fork, you will require two more parameters or two more measurements. One is the weight of this scale pan measured using common balance and the linear density of the string, linear density of the string that is mass per unit length of the string. So these two parameters you will have to measure using a common balance. Using this common balance we can find out the weight of the scale pan, keep the balance in the resting position, keep the object in the left pan, use the weight box, Try it from the expected maximum value. Try this and find out the exact weight of this scale pan. Then, after that, you may also take that experimental thread. This is a 10 meter wire of that experimental thread. So, place this on the left pan. Then again, balance it exactly and find out the exact weight of 10 meters of wire so that you can find out what is the mass per unit length of that experimental wire. So with these parameters included in the basic equation for finding out the frequency of the tuning fork, we can find out the exact value of frequency of the Melody string apparatus. We need to take the mass of the scale pan with the help of common balance and suppose if I get the mass of the scale pan as 6.4 grams, so it is 6.4 inch 10 raised to minus 3 kg. I'm just taking an example. Now, in the tuning fork part of the experiment, if I'm introducing a 2 gram weight in the scale pan, then the total mass, that is mass including the scale pan would be this 2 gram plus this weight of the scale pan. So that will come as the entry here. Then I'll be measuring the loop length. Suppose I'm measuring the loop length for four loops as 80 centimeter. Then length of one loop would be 20 centimeter. In meters, 0.2 meters. So then I will be calculating m by l square. The entry here would be my total mass that divided by 0.2 square would be my m by l square in SI unit and roughly if it is around 0 0.21 we will repeat this experiment with 4 grams in the scale pan. So again you will get 4 gram plus this weight of the scale pan as an entry over here. If we measure the loop, we, if we measure the length for the loop, four loops as 0.90, that is 90 centimeter, you will get 
the length of one loop as 0.215 then we will find out m by l square and you can see that it will again come to 0.21 that is m by l square will remain constant again you may repeat the experiment with 6 gram find out the length of one loop and do m by l square you can see it will remain constant at a definite value so this is the experiment tabular column with transverse mode with longitudinal mode also you will be doing the same thing change your mass find out the total mass including the scale fan mass note the length of definite number of loops from that find out the loop length for one loop calculate m by l square this you will go on repeating for various masses now that we have got m by l square for the transverse mode as well as m by l square for the longitudinal mode we can apply these equations to find out the frequency of the tuning fork. We can find it out by the transverse mode and longitudinal mode and take an average and represent it as a final result, the frequency of the tuning fork.